Do you want to know how to master the 231, my preferred formation at 7v7? Today is an introduction to the shape and a deep dive into how we build out of the back. So let's go. So I've had a couple requests to do a more of an in-depth 7v7 video, very similar to the 9v9 video that I have on the channel, which is actually the most viewed video on the channel. And, I, and I'll link that in the notes. But several of you have reached out and said, hey, could you do a similar series based on 7v7? I also have a video on the channel explaining why I prefer the 231 over other formations at 7v7. So I'm not gonna rehash that, but I will also link that in the notes. The 231 formation consists of two center backs, two fullbacks or outside midfielders, one central midfielder, and one striker. There are many advantages to the 231. The biggest one to me is the shape provides natural width. You don't have to send people out wide to manufacture width. It's already provided in the shape and it's easy for young players to understand. The other main advantage is that you can build it to 9v9 and 11v11 easier than with other formations. Starting positions for our build out are critical. I tell our center backs that they need to stay at the edge of the 18 yard box. What can sometimes happen is they tend to drift up like this, or they start to drift in like this. And you'll need to constantly tell them the starting spot is at the edge of the 18 yard box. The outside midfielders or fullbacks need to stay right around the build out line right where the build out line touches the, the touch line because we want them to stay as wide as possible. Once the ball gets played in to one of our center backs, then the fullback on that side can come down to help. But until then, they need to stay high and wide. The central midfielder starts right around the arch. If he starts too high, you can run into trouble. And if he starts too low, you can run into trouble. So I like to tell them start right around the arch. The nine, it's critical that they stay up, and this can be difficult for young players. What we don't want is the nine to come down here on our build out, because it again, just compresses the space we have in the middle. So let's take a look at my U9s setting up to build out of the back during one of our games this fall. As the goalkeeper looks to roll the ball out, let's evaluate the field player's starting positions. Our two center backs have started too centrally here, taking up space just outside the six yard box. Their starting positions need to be wider, towards the edge of the 18 yard box. The left fullback or left outside midfielder is set up here. You can see that he's far too central from where we want him in our starting position. We want him to be where the touch line and the build out line come together. Our right fullback or right midfielder is set up here. You can see his width is good as he's almost to the edge of the field. His depth, however, is not and he's far too low from where we want the starting position, which again, for the fullbacks should be where the touch line and the build out line come together. The center midfielder is too low, crowding the space inside the box. He needs to be set up right at the arch. The striker, who's not in this picture, is in a good position high up the field. So now that we've established our starting positions, let's talk about the initial build out. First of all, the goalkeeper will be playing the ball to one of the two center backs 95% of the time. And the reason for that is balls played to the center midfielder in the 7v7 game. Oftentimes you have one, two, three defenders standing right along this build out line. And the second the goalkeeper plays the ball and it goes out of the box, uh, they're, they're sort of ready to pounce. And so it's, it's much easier to play a ball here to the center back to give them more time for when these defenders come versus playing a ball right to the center midfield. So as the ball comes out to our center back, a couple things need to happen. The fullback on the side the ball was played to needs to come down to support. The center midfielder needs to come over and support as well. And you have to really coach this because the center midfielder has a tendency to come over and crowd the space here. What I say is stay central. So come over a little bit, but make sure you're still staying central. The center back and the fullback on the side opposite to where the ball went need to come and cinch in. And one thing that I tell, especially the fullbacks, is that if the ball is not on your side of the field, you can the, the, the most you can come over is halfway. 
okay? That's the very most. And when the, when you get started, you will have fullbacks that will, that will come all the way across the field and they'll come over here like this. So if you can tell them, look, if the ball's not on your side, you, you can come over to about halfway, that will help. So as the center back has the ball, the first thing they have to do is get their head up and scan. As the defenders come, if they have space, we always encourage them to take it. Now, how they take that space is important because we want them to take the space going up the field. So going up like this. What we don't want is them to take the space wide because we already have somebody wide here. We don't need to crowd the space. So one thing that you will see in young center backs is they'll take this ball and they'll start coming out here. And that just crowds space here and makes it much easier to defend. They need to take the space, take it up the field this way. So let's take a look at why it's so important for our center back to take that space. You can see here that despite being too central, our center back is still able to draw in almost three defenders for the full back to have space out wide. So our center back has taken his space. Our fullback has come down to support. The central midfielder has come over a little bit centrally, but staying centrally and supporting. The fullback on the opposite side and the center back on the opposite side are cinching in. There's two more positions that we need to discuss. So first and foremost, it's very important for young goalkeepers to feel comfortable getting out of goal. And I think that's really important. And even if it leads to goals, I don't want them just sitting in the middle of the goal. So as they play that ball to the fullback on their side they're encouraged to come out to be that avenue of support and I usually say come out at least to the six yard box but even if they come out here I, I don't totally discourage it because I want them to be very comfortable moving around also our nine has to start drifting towards that side now they've got to be careful so what we don't want to see is our nine come all the way down over here to the touchline and then because then if that ball is played out to our fullback and our fullback starts coming up into this space the nine is quote in their lane or in their space. What we want the nine to do if this ball is here is to start looking for what we call a beyond ball. So I'm gonna add defenders in a minute, but you're looking for that space. Some coaches call it get in the hole, where if there's space and we can play a ball all the way through to the nine, we're gonna to wanna to do that. But that's gonna take the nine, number one, starting to sort of get towards that side, but not coming down here. You'll see a lot of, of young forwards who are kind of, they just go to the ball, they'll kind of come down here. And then you have, again, a situation that's a lot easier to defend because we've got four guys now in a compressed space. The nine really Really has to stay up and look for this beyond ball. Here's an example of our striker getting themselves into a great position for our center back. You can see here that our center back has taken his space and gets his head up looking for the striker. The fullback on this side has not come down in support and needs to be deeper and wider. I'm going to start not with this formation of a press, which is how I would prefer to press. I want to talk about what youth coaches have to see quite a bit, which is what I like to call the full press. So a lot of coaches will have their two defenders, or sometimes one defender, uh, right around the midline um, or the half line, and they'll put four guys here. When I see this, I immediately tell our center backs to get all the way to the goal line. This will give them as much time as possible to make a decision on what to do. What happens is if our center backs stay up here and the ball comes, they now have nowhere near as much time to make a decision on what to do. The pressure's on them immediately. On the other hand, if they are as deep as possible, when the ball comes here, they will have exceedingly more time to make a decision. So ball is with our keeper and it's played to our right the center back. As this press starts to come, most of the time this is just a mad dash of players coming and it looks something like this. I always encourage the center backs to take their space unless they are under dramatic pressure. He could take his space a little bit here, but it might his best option might just be to stay here because what's going to happen is as the fullback comes down, if the defender pressuring who is the widest does not mark that man, the easy solution to get out of here is to just play it wide and then we're gone. In, in basically a 3v2 or a 4v2. However, some presses are slightly more sophisticated than that. And if the widest defender who is pressing takes the fullback on this side, you end up looking at something like this. So in this scenario, the onus of finding that space is really on the center midfielder because this is closed to the back to the keeper and it's closed back here. So the center midfielder just needs to get into this space. And as long as 
you have a center back who is moderately skilled at passing, this should be a fairly easy ball as long as they get their head up and scan and realize what's happening as soon as possible. And then again, you're off to the races with your center midfielder, your striker, and likely your fullback on the opposite side. So here's an example of a game we played in the fall where you can see this team is coming at us with four attackers, really not in any organized shape. The widest attacker here goes directly to the ball, allowing our left center back to easily slip it over to our left fullback. Let's talk about what happens if the team's a little bit more organized. So here, they're gonna press with three. They're gonna hold their central midfielder and hold their two center backs. So as the ball comes out to our right center back, the question becomes who provides the initial pressure? And some teams have this organized and some teams don't. If both the left fullback and the striker come in, in something that looks like this, if they both come to the ball, again, it becomes very easy. You just slide it out to the right fullback here and you're off to the races. Now, for whatever reason, if they are organized and are pressing how I would recommend you press, the ball comes from the keeper to the right fullback. The pressure should come from the nine. If that happens and the three presses the two here, you have a couple of options. Now, ideally, the, the best option is the nine coming over and with that beyond ball that we talked about, because now you're in a dangerous area. But that might not happen and the six might come along with the nine. So in that case, really the easiest thing is to just go right back to the keeper. Now, I should say it's the simplest thing. It's not the easiest thing at this age. If they see pressure, a lot of times they try to go into it or they just always play the ball over here. If the press comes in this direction with three, the it's very unlikely that fullback on the opposite side will come and cover your keeper. Now if that happens, then we've got a situation we've got to talk about and the central midfielder on our team is going to be the option or the nine here. But that's really unlikely. What's more light than likely is that this two is going to come over and this should be inviting us to switch field. Here's a team that's a little more organized pressing us with three players. You can see that their center midfielder is staying back and all we do is slide it to our fullback and we get out and generate an opportunity. So let's talk about if the team you're playing decides to sit back. This is really unlikely in 7v7. However, maybe you've broken their press and scored several goals and, and they've decided that they really don't want to test you. So in this situation, the ball goes out to our right center back. And as always, but, but especially in this situation, we want the right center back to take their space. And the right center back is going to take his space I'm just gonna move our fullback and our center back on the opposite side over. I'm gonna move our goalkeeper over. Our, our nine's gonna come. Our two is gonna come down and support. We always encourage a center back to take their space until they are engaged. So if they're not engaged until the build out line, they should not give up the ball. And the fullback will have to come with, as will the center midfielder have to come with. Once they're engaged, then they can simply play the ball out wide. Or if they are engaged in more of a pattern that looks like this, where the nine comes over and it's like this, then we're in a very same situation. The nine can slip in here and we can try to play a ball in here. Now we'd be looking for like a one, two down the wide area. Or let's say the center back comes over and you've got a really organized team and they look like this. There's, there's no problem here with our six kind of sitting back, or if the six is up here, just playing it back to our goalkeeper or, or just going directly back to the other center back on the other side, trying to switch field. So guys, that was an introduction to the 2-3-1 with an emphasis on building out of the back. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and be on the lookout for some videos on midfield transition and attacking and finishing in the final third from the 2-3-1. Did you like that video? Check out that one.